You are about to watch a clip from the Dead Ball TV podcast. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Assume I know nothing. We've spoken about this a little bit, but assume I'm an idiot, which I might be. Give me, give me the rundown here. What, what, what do people need to know about these clubs uh, to get into Turkish football? So I would say there's mainly three big clubs, okay? okay. And they're all located in Istanbul. So they're all Istanbul clubs. Um, the biggest ones that anybody really needs to know about is Galatasaray. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a club that I support. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, Y'all got a good squad right now. Very good squad. Yeah. Um, hopefully we'll get into the Champions League. We're about to play Copenhagen next week. It's in our hands. So if we win, y'all should. Through. Y'all should. Yeah. Uh, the next club is Fenerbahce. So they're like yellow and blue is their color, yellow and purple. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have Besiktas also. They're like white and black. They're the Eagles. Um, so those are the big three. They're all located in Istanbul. So Galatasaray right now is on uh, the western. So if you if y'all don't know Istanbul, it's like west and east, right? It's okay. Split in between by the Bosphorus. Galatasaray is on the west side. That's where their new stadium is. Uh, Fenerbahce is on the east side, and Besiktas is also on the west side. Okay. Um, and Turkish fans are crazy. They're like fanatics. Correct. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for saying that first. Yeah, they're crazy. If I were to describe them, they're crazy. Okay. Yeah. And like anytime you have like a huge signing, there's a huge following. It, if at one point in time there were Turkish fans were in Ronaldo's Twitter and Instagram saying come to Turkey, come to Turkey. It's like very famously noted like Turkish fans will like not I want to say harass, but they'll harass people who are like rumored to be coming to their club. Some say harass, others would say simping for yeah, these players. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I say admire. Uh, okay. I say simp. But okay, you, you simp, can go yeah. admire. Yeah, yeah. I mean you like to look at things in a positive light. I respect I do. that. I do, I do. I'm I'm the opposite side of the coin. So we balance each other nicely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so uh you know trying to attract slash simping for these big players. That's definitely something I see on on the IG yes. all the time. Yeah, definitely. And like Turkish fans are known for that. Like and they made an They've made it known for that. And also, like, social media presence, Turkey has been going higher and higher. Like, you know, Salt Bay, he's Turkish. So, I mean, I ran into coworkers who were like, who's Salt Bay? I was like, you know, he's Turkish, right? And nobody knew that, but he is, alas, if you look into it. Um, anyways, back to, the, back to the club yeah, history. Yeah, 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 back yeah. to the club history. Yeah, so who's, who supports Fenerbahce versus Besiktas and, and, and why? So I would say, like, winners attract fans, right? right. So, like, if you have a history of winning, you know, you're kind of like automatically a fan, okay? So if we go back to the, I guess, early days or something, and there's some controversy here that I'll, that I'll touch upon. Ooh, do tell. <laughs> so Turkey was established like 1923, right? And okay. if you, I don't know when exactly the first like football federation was established, but they obviously had like a semblance of a league. And it's debated that before, I think it's 1958 or 53. It's one of those years. I can't remember exactly when. It's debated that, uh, like Fenerbahce had all these championships from those like leagues, but it's debated that there wasn't necessarily a league established, so those titles don't really exist. Oh, okay. They don't really exist, so there's like some controversial debate going on, like oh, like Fenerbahce has the most titles or whatnot. Ah. But if we don't consider that period, okay, um, it's still close, but Galatasaray has the most titles. Okay, so okay. Fenerbahce are the Uruguay of club football, where they yeah. say they have four World Cups, but everybody else is like, nah, bro, you have two. Exactly. Okay. And they don't count. Oh, okay. Like okay. That. Okay. And I'll, I'll touch upon that more. And like, I'm kind of biased because I'm a Galatasaray fan, yeah. but I'm just saying, like, I'm going to guess I know, you don't think they count. I don't think yeah. they count. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. I figured. Nah, nah, nah. Wow. Okay. And they fight so hard to try to get it yeah. to count. And it's like, why? Like, who does this matter to, really, yeah. in the end? Exactly. And uh, you'll see the stars on like Turkish clubs jerseys, and I think every star is like for a five, like every five championship wins that they have okay. is a star. I think Galatasaray has like four or five. Okay. Um, so just multiply that by five, and you'll get their total championships. What about um, when like the little guys win? Like Travis Bonspor won it. I probably butchered that. Travis Bonspor, yeah. Travis Bonspor. Um, I was gonna say is like the fourth okay. club. So if you don't support like the top three, they're like the next biggest thing you can okay. say. Um, they're located like in the northern region of Turkey, like the Black Sea region. Right. Um, so they have a lot of supporters. They play good football. They just don't have the financial means to really keep up okay. and like attract big players. They don't have really have the history. Uh, they won, I think, six titles. Okay. In the in the period of between in the nineteen seventies nineteen eighties, they won six titles. So they had like okay. a really big, I guess, gathering at that point. Yeah. And going back to what I was saying about like winning gets you fans. Like Galatasaray, I think is the most successful club in the past like ten years, uh, so they've won the most titles, mm-hmm. and they're the only Turkish club who has like a European Cup. 
So I believe they won the European Cup in 2000. Like if, that's like big. that's before it turned into like the UEFA Champions League. Yeah. It's called the UEFA, UEFA European Cup, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Some so, massive bragging rights. So there. they're the only team that has like the only Turkish club that's won that trophy. Okay. So that history gives also like precedent to supporting them. So in terms of like people like supporting them, I would say Gold Star is a mix of people. I would say Fenerbahce is more like an elite club, like more rich people support okay. them. Uh, it's definitely in a more affluent area in Turkey. So if you drive by there, it's like it's like more rich. Okay. The people who I've come across that are like wealthy are Fenerbahce supporters. Okay. They've also been caught in like some controversy in recent years. They got banned from UEFA from competing in UEFA Champions League for two years because of some kind of um, I think I'm not sure if it was bribery or something, but it was something. Uh, okay. So they got banned from like playing for two years. Okay. I think that was in the mid 2000s or the 2010s. I forgot what that happened exactly. Um, and now they are the president is like some successful business guy in Turkey, Ali Koç. He's like president of like Koç Industries or something like okay. that. Not like Koch Industries in the US, but similar. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. And then you have Besiktas, yeah. who's like the the third club, right? Okay. And they won 2 3 years ago, I think. And so basically no, like they have a they have a, like a really good talent pipeline in terms of generating talent in their academy. They have a lot of talent, but they can never hold on to them. Their signings are kind of poor. They have, they'll have like one or two really good signings and they'll do stuff, but then for some reason the coach at the time sucks. And yeah. Like they can never pull it together. Yeah. And so it's like it's like those like sadist fans who don't want to win and like like Arsenal fans. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, more they're, like they're always Spurs competing. Fans, they're always competing, but they like don't actually like materialize wins. Okay. But when they do win, it's like exciting, right? And okay. so I would say they're kind of that club, so the people supporting them kind of fall in those in those buckets. So say. are they like the? Is there a working class club in Istanbul? I wouldn't say there is necessarily a working class club, but if I were to say like, who does the working class support more? It's probably between Galatasaray and Besiktas, more so towards Besiktas. I would say. Okay. Um, so Besiktas is kind of like the hipster pick of the big three. Definitely, definitely. All right, I've wondered this for a while. Why are all the big clubs in Istanbul and Ankara doesn't have anything? What's going on there? Uh, honestly, I don't know why there isn't any in Ankara. I know that there's like nothing in Ankara. Really? There's nothing? So, like, it's not, it's, it's the not, capital, though. Like, it's not like a fun place to be. Okay. Right? Have you been? I have not been, actually. So, this is a controversial take. But there's a famous controversial. quote. Controversial. There's wow. a famous quote. Uh, I think it was by Orhan Pamuk. I'm not sure. I could be quoted wrong. But some famous guy in Turkey quoted, like, the best thing about uh, going to Ankara, I believe, is the return trip back to, okay. Istanbul, <laughs> to Istanbul. To Istanbul. To Istanbul. Say, like, so I think Istanbul, okay. just in general, it's, like, so much more, like, there's more population. Everyone's there. Like, the best stadium is, like, in a really good location. It's, like, right in the middle of Istanbul. You go up and down the, uh, the Bosphorus, and you can get to the stadium. So it's like hell to get there on on traffic days. But, yeah, because there's always traffic. Well, but, I mean, bro, in terms of like historical significance, yeah, you could argue Istanbul is only competing with Rome, Paris, yeah, maybe Athens, and yeah, maybe Athens. Maybe I mean, if you ask me, Athens is clear. But uh, <laughs> uh, dude, I don't know. Maybe that that might be it. That might be it for like the big giant cities that have been relevant for two thousand years. Exactly. Which is why I never understood why Istanbul wasn't the capital. Oh, that's true. Um, I think the main reason by reason being it not being the capital, I believe, was more of like a geopolitical okay. situation. Like it's too like risky because if you just go, it's just kind of like the Byzantine Empire. Like it was more susceptible to attacks because it was on the water, whereas right. it's more central. Um, it's harder to, I guess, get to. Uh, has that, that has that been the case? So that was like a out of Turk, a decision. Yes. Which, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I would yeah, have. So Istanbul wasn't the uh, was never considered as the capital. Okay. But there's other smaller teams in Istanbul, um, but these are like the main ones. So, and I don't think there's any other. Is there any other capital or city in the world that can hold three other teams, like three big teams? I haven't heard. Just London. Just London, huh? I mean, Madrid's got two. Atleti and I Real. I guess London, yeah, that makes sense. Mm, no, Rome doesn't have... I mean, I mean, I, I don't... They have Roma and uh, Lazio, but I, 
that's not on the, the level of Atleti uh, yeah. Real, with all due respect. Um, <laughs> I'm, it, it's, I think it's London. I think, it I has think London to be makes London. the most sense. Yeah, because yeah. London's got like, what, five clubs in the Prem? Yeah, that's true. Fulham, Brentford, Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea. I know I'm pr- Crystal Palace at six. Yeah, Crystal Palace. Damn. Okay, so yeah, yeah London is like six. the pinnacle. Yeah. I'm sh- I don't know if Paris has multiple. Paris, I'm not so sure, but nobody cares know. about Paris. Damn. So nah. I wish I could disagree. I mean, once Mbappe leaves. Nah, that's straight facts. That's straight facts. Once Mbappe leaves, what's left? The French fans are in the mud right now. Um, <laughs> I do. Oh, about a fun segue though. Um, Lille, right? The Lille. club? Uh, yeah. I thought it was Lille. Lille. But Sorry, I butchered it. We'll say Lille. Um, it's all right. I, they said, won what, I said in car. They won uh, two seasons ago? Three. Three? Maybe. Three, yeah. And who was their top scorer? Wasn't it? Oh, my God. It's Barack Yilmaz. Oh. Barack Yilmaz. <laughs> <laughs> the GOAT, dude. Oh, my 